All right, on to the next step. Nolan, you actually, uh, you got a package. Okay, I don't remember ordering anything, but where is it? It's just out here. Okay. There. Oh my God. This is me. My name is Kevin and I'm the host of a YouTube channel called Junkyard Digs. Now, if you've seen the video, you know that I was recently invited out to California by Donut Media to help Nolan with this 52 Imperial. But what you did not see in that video was the full extent of the ensuing five day battle to get it running and driving. And from what I can tell by looking at the comments, that's exactly what you guys want to see. So with that, let's crank the clock all the way back and tell the full story of putting Nolan's Imperial back on the road. I guess this is the first official video uh, of my car. This is a 1952 Chrysler Imperial. Oh, nope, hang on, that was too far back. I'm Nolan, the challenge starts now. So the to-do list for this car, uh, first things first, gotta finish up that fuel system. Should be pretty easy. Gotta redo the cooling system. I gotta make sure the transmission works. Gotta do some wiring. I'm not really sure how I'm gonna figure that one out. And then there's just a bunch of little things that add up to a huge body of work. Uh, whew, it's gonna be a long couple of days. Let's get cranking on this thing. Now the one little twist I did not mention is the fact that Nolan is locking himself in the garage until this car runs and drives. And since he obviously doesn't want to sleep on a couch all week, he jumped straight into working on the Imperial. His first step was to clean it out and organize the parts he had left over from last time. Once that was done, he moved up front and plumbed the hard line to the new fuel pump. Alright, so on the hard line side, I've got those fittings that I just put on. For the fuel pump side, I've got this piece of uh, stainless fuel line right here. It's already got uh, fittings on both ends. I'm just gonna be using one side. I'm gonna cut it in half, fit it up to the car, see how much I need to trim off of it. And then I'll put the rubber fuel line on so we have a flexible joint between the hard line and the engine. We'll be good to go. Whoa, look at that. Boom. All right, about, I think, that long. Okay, that's great. All right, we've connected the engine to the hard line. Now we gotta lift the car up and connect the hard line to the fuel tank. All right, I'm down under the fuel tank here. I am trying to remove the old filler neck. I feel like this rubber thing probably wants to come off, but it's rock hard and there's no way to get it off. All right. The heck? Okay, oh, some spider eggs. Lovely. Ugh. Cool. No, hell yeah. Okay. Mm. Uh. <laughs> How's that taste, Nolan? Oh, it's, it tastes like <laughs> diseases that have probably long been eradicated. <laughs> oh, yeah. But now it's. Now what? Hmm. Mm. Hmm. What are you thinking? I'm thinking of Sawzall. <laughs> <laughs> hey! Oh, God. What the f was that? No, oh, oh, I'm not, not gonna breathe that, dude. There it is. Filler neck officially off. Yeah. Oh. Mm. What even is that? Look at that, that's delicious. That is crazy. Okay. Ready? Squeeze yeah. it. Push. Uh. Looks like it kind of went in. Not really, dude. Oh, shit. That, that moved. Yeah, okay. right there. Yeah, yeah, push. push. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's on there, for sure. No, that's, that's gone. <laughs> Did the mic pick up everything in my sternum cracking at once just now? That was crazy. I think it's on, man. Yeah. Come on, man. What do you mean? <laughs> the first one was just fine. <laughs> Woo! All right, that's day one complete. We got the field system done. Justin, thank you very much for all your help, my man. Good luck, sir. Uh, thank you. What do you mean? Good, wait, you're not gonna, okay. Uh, Justin's gotta go home, but I've gotta sleep here, so. Let's make my bed and sleep in it. <laughs> All of us? <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, it's day two. Finished up the fuel system last night. So now, gotta move on to some other things. Today, gonna tackle some cooling and electrical work. I'm ready to keep this thing rolling, man. I'm stoked. I'm soaked. <laughs> I'm stoked and soaked. <laughs> Okay, before we begin, Justin had the great idea of just taking this whole hood off because it's held up with a, a jack handle right now, uh, and we don't want to get our heads cut off, so let's go ahead and do that. Got it. Ready? Yeah. Three. Where are we going with it? I don't know. <laughs> Let's yeah, there it is. Nice. Thanks, guys. Well, now that I can see, 
I see a bit of an issue here. The accessory pulley that drives the water pump and the alternator, it does line up, strangely enough, with the tensioner pulley, but that crank pulley is definitely further forward. What I think I can do is put some spacers and move this front pulley forward to line up with the crank, and then also do the same for the tensioner, because that bolts right off and it looks like I can modify that. What if you just flipped it? Huh. Justin, let's do your idea. We'll, we'll take the studs out, flip that thing around, see if that does anything. That'll be the quickest to yeah. try. Yeah. Should be easy enough. All right, so flipping the pulleys around didn't help. So I'm just gonna put some uh, spacers, AKA washers uh, in between the two pulleys and uh, gauge it out. I think that should help. It doesn't need to move much. Once. That's washers. Yeah, one, I'm gonna look real quick. Make sure we don't have the correct crank pulley here before we do anything stupid. This is what working with Nolan is like. I'm gonna make sure, I'm gonna check. Let me, let me look at this real quick. I've determined we don't have it. Okay, let's just move forward. Good times over here at Sykes Fabrication. Just, uh, you know, fabricating a custom uh, washer for the Imperial, you know, this is the real custom work. Oh, Jesus. Eventually, Nolan was able to find some washers and space all the pulleys out correctly. After that, it was time for a radiator. All right, new radiator time. This one's aluminum, should be a lot more efficient. I think that's a three core radiator, pretty sweet. Um, I actually did try to install this before, but when we put it in, uh, I realized that the outlet tube was on the wrong side. Our friend Smokey uh, went ahead and put it to the correct side, so now it should be good to go. I'm very excited to put this thing in because I've had this for a while now, so let's do it. All right, look at that. Okay, step two of day two is complete, and I'm now realizing how long this has taken me. If I don't get some extra help around here soon, uh, I don't think I'm gonna be able to get it done in a week. All right, on to the next step. Nolan, you actually, uh, you got a package. Here. Oh my God. <laughs> I said I'd come help next time. Can we just get a plane ticket? <laughs> so there you go. You guys are all caught up on what happened before I landed in California. At this point, it was Tuesday afternoon, and we wanted the car done by Friday, so we set straight to work. All right, bring me up to speed. Sure. Where are we? Okay. It's been uh, a year. It has been a while. Uh, things have changed a little bit. We got the fuel systems complete now. Radiator's in the car. We just got to uh, put a few, few rubber pieces in, and we can uh, fill the radiator and uh, see, where all, the leaks see are. where all the leaks are at. That's different. Yes, oh yeah, so now there's an alternator. So this has 12 volt now, so I think we might have to do some wiring. I know when I was here last time a year ago, we made a video on this and we put this Ford solenoid in. Yes. With that still in play. Yeah, you know, with the stock electronics, like this guy, and there's just some other weird- All of that. Trends, <laughs> you, should, you should just take all that out, simplify the system so we're not confused about what components we're using. Yep. Um, on the bottom of the car, we gotta kind of jockey the engine and transmission around so like, we can put a pan on there because it's kind of blocked right now by a mm. cross member. Brakes work? The brakes do work, yes. I'm in, let's do it. <laughs> All right, this and is... I don't know if you know, but I can't leave the shop until this thing's done. Oh, there's so, a nice box yeah. outside you can sleep in. I, <laughs> I spent three days in it, it wasn't that bad. Oh. <laughs> One thing I did just remember, mm -hmm. we never did an engine break in on this last time, we just kind of started it. Yes. We don't know if the cam's been broken in. There was some evidence of it having been run, and there was other evidence of it never having ran. Yeah. Okay. So with that being said, we should probably set up a full cooling system and everything, because when this thing fires, we need to run it for like a really s stressful, terrifying <laughs> 20 minutes. Okay, well, that's At it. RPM. Okay. Mm. Yeah, I hate cam breaking. That's why I love roller motors mm -hmm. for roller hydraulic cams, because you don't have to do that. We barely have enough like standard tools here. It's all metric. And uh, yeah, we definitely don't have these around. I should have thrown some in the box when I came. Dang it. Yeah, oh well. I was already over the freight limit. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm gonna stare at the electrical for a while because this okay. has changed since I've been here. I'm gonna yes. figure out what's here and then go off of that. Sounds good. And you're gonna do cooling system, correct? Yes. yes. Sweet. Oh, I have some gauges too. Because last I time you were here, we bought ask. a whole thing of gauges. I'll go get that. Cool. Perfect. Prior Kevin knew what was going on way better than today's Kevin. Oil pressure, water temp, and voltage, I feel, is, that's you, kind of like your basics. Another thing that you can run, which I may suggest, especially in your case, since we're converting this car to 12 volts, you're going to have to put a 12-volt uh, fuel level sending unit oh, sensor yeah. in and then match that directional ohm reading with that style gauge. 
and then you can put it in one of these next to it oh, as a like an aftermarket fuel gauge, okay. if you know what I mean. I think this is going to be a car where it's like, every time I take it out, I'm going like, to go to the gas station, basically. <laughs> what, that, this? Yeah. No. <laughs> we, I feel like we have a really good shot. Yeah. We can pull this off. Yeah, we can do this. We can pull this off. We're screwed. All right, let's do it. <laughs> Stupid. So looking under our dash, this is the wire I was talking about. It's just a loop in here. I can simplify that to just run across up front and then use the rest of this to run some relay blocks and fuse blocks and then wire this whole car by hand. We don't have any aftermarket harnesses for it. I'm just gonna get a few spools of wire and go to town on it for a couple days and try to rerun everything myself because all these wires are this like I don't even know what they would call this, but this style of insulation where it's woven and it just snaps. Bare wire. Oh no, it has electric windows. We're not going to get to those. <laughs> the wiper and the blinker are very special, unique switches. So hopefully these still work internally. That thing's got a mechanism in there. <laughs> Hopefully these still work internally and I can definitely salvage those, but I'd like to keep all of this as close to original as possible for Nolan's sake. Step one is going to be figure out what to do with this key because he does not have keys. And from what I can understand, he can't get this ignition cylinder out. I need to start there and then figure out all the pin out on all of our switches and then draw my diagram. Good Lord. It's all right, we can ship you back home. If you <laughs> Put me back in the box. Can you poke some holes in it this time, please? Okay, so now that Kevin's here, I'm pretty confident in the engine running and all the systems getting figured out, but there's still one variable I'm a little worried about, and that is the transmission. Transmission in this car is called the fluid drive, which uses a clutch and a torque converter like an automatic. So you use the clutch to get the car moving, but then once the car's in motion above six miles per hour, it'll shift up into its next gear on its own. This has kind of been the one thing I've always been worried about with this car, the torque converter itself needs 11 quarts of oil. It does specify a certain kind of Chrysler motor oil that's probably out of production. And then, then it just says, or just use SAE 10 weight oil. So we're gonna do that. That's a lot of fluids to be putting in this transmission that we're not sure about the seals or anything like that. That's another thing I just realized. We could get this thing running pretty easily. Getting it driving is kind of another question. So I've been digging under the dash a little bit, um, trying to figure out how to get our key out, find our pinouts on the back of our switches, and figure out exactly how to draw my diagram up. Just some preliminary work right now. And I pulled a screw off the bottom of the lock cylinder and started pushing it back. And apparently this, I don't know what this is, but this whole steel cable is connected to the back of the key. And all that comes out of it is a wire. I've never seen that. And I'm gonna say that a lot this week because we don't do a lot of work on 50s cars. Basically, I'm just gonna put 70s, 80s style electronics that I scheme up in this thing. And then Nolan will also have the ability to go down to any O'Reilly's where we source our whole electrical system from and get replacement components anywhere he is in the country. And that's worth something. Ta-da! All right, I've got our key out. Pretty interesting thing I've seen about this. It's got this steel shaft that encapsulates one electrical wire. That's it. I've never seen anything like this. It's also really fun to play with. It is. If I had a guess, this was an anti-theft measure. That makes sense. Old Hollywood movies, they reach under the dash, they touch the wires together, and yeah. they drive off. How do you do that when you have a big old uh, casing around the wire? I mean, yeah, encase it in steel. Good luck I mean, touching this, your ignition yeah. wire under the dash. I mean, dash. this thing was a... This thing's a fancy car back in his day. It makes you sense. Know? You want it to be protected. That would be my guess. I could be totally wrong. Yeah. If you have a better guess as to what this is, if you have more knowledge, uh, let us know down in the comments. They'll probably know. They always know. They always know. You always know. So to make life easier under the dash for wiring this car today, I'm going to remove the front bench seat. Give me a little more room. We can also use that. Oh my gosh, this is old and high. No. <laughs> How's it gonna get out Dude, the this door? thing's like 300 pounds. <laughs> yeah, this is heavy. <laughs> Anyway, it'll give us more room to get in there and vacuum everything out. Assuming we can, is it still, there's no way it's that heavy. It's gotta be hooked to something, right? No, look underneath it. Uh, yeah, it's strapped. Oh, the seat belts, that would help. Gotcha. All right, take two. Oh yeah, that's way better. 
and down. Dude, that's a man cave couch right there. Look at that thing, it's ridiculous. Waiting area of a diner. <laughs> With the front seat out, I vacuumed out the interior, laid out a blanket, and started ripping out the electrical. All right, we got all of our wiring stripped out of the dash. I've got a good open space here. I can start moving forward with planning how many fuses we're gonna need and drawing up our wiring diagram because now I've seen all of the switches on the back of the panel and I know our pinouts. For example, this one has four of whatever those do and this one has two of whatever these do. I don't know, we'll find out. <laughs> While I was busy pulling out the old wiring and building a new schematic on the whiteboard, poor Nolan kept getting pulled away to meetings. This didn't bother me very much because the electrical was a one man job anyway, but unlike Nolan, I got to sleep in a bed each night regardless of whether or not the car was finished. I thought today was going to be super productive, uh, but I keep getting pulled away for either different videos or meetings and what have you, uh, so I'm getting kind of frustrated with that to be honest. People seem to forget that I can't leave here until this is done, it's kind of feeling like they want me to stay here forever. I slept... A little worse last night, to be honest. Uh, yeah, kind of regretting the gimmick. <laughs> I was able to break into the shower, and uh, it was cold. While Nolan suffered through a couple more meetings, I ran the first wire into the car. Finally, it felt like I was making some progress on this electrical system. An hour later, Nolan finally escaped from the office and came out to install the radiator fan. It's probably easier to do this with the radiator out of the car. I now realize. So we've made sure the radiator fits. Now it's time to take it out all, all over again. So the idea is that this little plastic flexible rod goes through your fins on your radiator to hold the fan on. And as I was pushing this one through, it kind of bunched up a fin. So now I can't really push it all the way through now. So I'm just going to take this pick and gently bend the fins out of the way so this can go through. It feels so wrong, but sue me, you know? Okay, there we go. And went through. That is a pick sticking out of my radiator. All right, to take that out gently. Oh no, Nolan's stressing during a car build. We've never seen this content before. Nolan, if we don't get this done, we're gonna lose the shop. <laughs> we're gonna lose the shop. All right, one more to go. Meanwhile, I've spent some time under the dash. Everything seems to be okay. I'm gonna go turn a key on, see if my main relay closes to activate our fuse board, and then turn the key, see if the starter will tap, or see if it all burns to the ground. I hear a relay. I'm just gonna uh, make sure she's in neutral. I'm just gonna tap it. Cool. Spins? Spins. There we go. Won't be needing any of this anymore. Mmm, good stuff. Into the pile. All right, I believe this to be our old starter solenoid ordeal. Um, there was a flasher relay here. Not sure what that one is off the top of my head. That was an old voltage regulator for the generator. But as you can see, we now run an alternator on this car and it is internally regulated. So that's a lot cleaner install. All I have to do is put 12 volts to this as a field wire and it will internally regulate and decide what amperage of charge it needs to dump into the battery and one other wire for it to charge the battery, which is all hooked up. So right now, this car would run. Anything beyond this point is going to be headlights and bonus points and then a whole bunch of figuring stuff out on the transmission because despite this being such an old car with this wild manual automatic transmission, it's got a bunch of electrical solenoids on it. So. I gotta deal with all that at some point. Woo. We got the radiator in, we got the fan wired up. Kevin did an amazing job doing the electricals. Uh, it's, you know, grounded to the chassis. Let's see if it works. Ready? Yeah. Power and fan switch. There it goes. Something spins. Something spins. It's a good day after all. Yeah, that was so exciting. Now there's <laughs> everything behind that that has to spin yet. Starter's coming out. Here we go. Washer came out and boom. That is, we can do bench press with this thing. Oh, I mean, this isn't bench press, but you get the idea. Okay, let's get the new one in. Okay, so we got the old starter out, we got the new one here. Let's make sure they look the same. <laughs> oh my God, it's just so much smaller. Um, 
Looks like a high torque gear reduction, so. Yes. As long as all your diameters and plating match, you'll be good. This guy right here has 200 foot pounds of torque, which is pretty amazing. So let's get it in the car, let's wire it up and uh, never do that again. <laughs> I want to be in another place that hate when you say you don't understand. I think you're right. I think he's losing it. I want to be in the energy. I'm always singing Linkin Park. <laughs> if you haven't been keeping up with what I've been up to, it's been this for like six hours. So you haven't, you haven't missed a lot. Right now I've moved on to headlights. I'm wiring in some new uh, pigtails that we picked up from O'Reilly's. These will allow us to put our new 12 volt headlights into the car. The old pigtail was a little bit different shape and just like everything else, completely powdered in your hand. So we get these wired in, run some wires back there, and then the front of the car will be done probably midday next week. A weird problem this car has had since I got it is that the clutch does this. <laughs> That's not what you want in the clutch pedal. The solution to that problem is this guy right here. It's a bracket with a bearing on the end. The end of the clutch pedal rod goes over this bearing, uh, keeps it in place, stops it hopefully from doing that. So I'll hop underneath the car, attach this bracket to the transmission where it lives, and hopefully that solves our problem. I think it will. All right, so here we go. We got the bracket, it's all greased up. Let's go ahead and push it in. Come on, there we go, look at that. All right, it's in there, excellent. Line this guy up. Dude, this is just so complex. Like, look at all this linkage and everything, man. It's crazy. How's it feel when I touch your camera? <laughs> it's really helpful. <laughs> hey, Kevin, you want a 50, 1952 Chrysler Imperial? I'm good. Thanks, so. They're fun to work on. You can feel it that it's like in its later stages of his life. It's got good flop flop factor. Do you know that personally? Or? <laughs> uh, no. Are you in your later stages of life? No, <laughs> not yet. Who's this? He's not floppy. I'm gonna press the clutch, you ready? Yeah, yeah, go ahead and press the clutch. Hey, look that at that. That feels like a clutch. So now you can see that the, the clutch pedal right here being pushed, actuating this uh, arm right here, and that's pressing down on the clutch right there. Let's try something. I'm going to pull it into drive. Okay. Can you spin? I think I was spinning the clutch earlier. Yeah. Can you spin the clutch still? No. Or does it spin the back tires? This is spinning right now. No back tire spinach. Never mind. Oh, wait. So. Now there it goes. The back tires are spinning? Oh, uh, yeah. Yep. Okay. Oh, I was spinning it the wrong direction. How about now? Nothing. Sweet. You have an operable clutch, sir. Yes. On to the next thing. All right. So this is our, not our, it's not technically our transmission pan, it's our torque converter pan. Because once again, remember this car has a flywheel, torque converter, clutch, transmission. It's, it's a wild time under there, I'll tell you that. But this is the torque converter reservoir. It's got a fill and a drain on it. And it's got these three couplers. We were missing two of them so no one's dad whipped up some new ones for us and she's good to go all right so there's some uh, nuts holding the transmission onto the uh this cross member right here we're going to take the nuts off uh lift the transmission up just a little bit so we can put the pan into place after that we're uh basically done, done. The day. and then we get to figure out what all the real problems are <laughs> like the transmission doesn't work <laughs> or something i mean by design, a torque converter fluid coupler should not work without fluid. Um, but for some reason, the rear wheels were spinning the last time we fired this thing up and it didn't have any fluid in the reservoir. So maybe there was some fluid left over in the torque converter, maybe. All right, go ahead, sir. Yep. You're all lined up, good to go. It's working. Give me a half a pump more. Perfect, okay, that's floorboard. Let's see if that's enough. Okay. Do, do, do. Son of a gun. Is it not? Nope. <laughs> Who designed this? This is a terrible design. <laughs> Why is it off? The problem, as you can see, is that my pan hits the cross member and doesn't clear up here, or hits the cross member. Judging by that, it looks like our answer is a 
We'll remove the cross member. Okay. How are you guys feeling? It's getting kind of late. Maybe we can do this tomorrow. I like those words. Okay. We made a lot of progress. We did. Today. It was a good day. Yeah. I felt like it was the first real day. Yeah. All right. I'm going to go to my hotel room, have fun on the couch. All right, man. Nope. No problem. So, really, really glad that clutch works. Um, that has been really worrying me for a, a while now. We are 95% done mechanically, which feels really great. You know, all the pieces so far have been here that we need. It's just like a giant puzzle of being like, oh, this isn't working. Clearly there needs to be a part here. Let's go look in this part basket over here. That kind of looks like it works. Oh, there you go. That's how we fix the clutch, you know? I mean, that's just been the whole thing. My, my, my mind is just empty right now. I'm very tired. So tomorrow, I'm hoping we can get everything together finally, fire this thing up, and hopefully back it out that garage door over there and prove to everybody in the office and in the comments that this thing wasn't a huge, huge mistake. It is day, Monday, Tuesday, say Thursday, four. So day four, we got the transmission pan to figure out. We got gauges to install. There's a vacuum line we gotta figure out. We gotta get the right barbs. We still have to track down the right oil uh, for the torque converter. We've had Jimmy running all around Southern California looking for this stuff. I think that's everything we need to get this thing cranked over. We gotta do the break-in, and then after that, try to drive it out of the parking lot. Do you like my, my jammy pants? In my excitement this morning, I uh, got up early and filled this uh, with water, you know? Now the cooling system is complete. No leaks? No leaks, it's all good. But I kind of forgot that we had one critical component to install, and that is a water temp gauge, which Kevin has to take out the existing one in there from the manifold. And it is way below the top of the radiator. <laughs> so we're gonna employ a little TikTok hack. That's right, a little bonus TikTok hack. You didn't think you were gonna get one in this video, did you? What I'm gonna do is take the shop vac, stick it into my radiator. Uh, it doesn't fit very well. Uh, and hopefully the suction from the vacuum will keep the water from leaking out. I have no idea if this is gonna work. Gabe is giving me a skeptical look on his face. <laughs> so <laughs> I've seen it work with oil, which is a lot heavier. That's a lot, a lot more viscous, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, we'll see, man. It'll either be one mess or two messes or no mess. All right, All right. let's see what happens. Oh, it's working. It's sucking. Ready? Oh yeah. Go for it. It works. Oh god, it's stuck in water. It's working! It's working! Uh, no, it's... it's working! Look at that, dude! Alright, you're good. Whoa! I should be able to tighten that down and we're golden. <laughs> it worked! I can't believe that worked. That was awesome! Alright. We learned. We learned. Uh, what, what are we rating this one, Henry? Hogwash, hog piss, or? <laughs> <laughs> hog piss, or business? Business. Yeah. What is this rating scale? Uh, it changes every week. Yeah. <laughs> Sweet, we'll tighten that down, and then our cooling system is really, truly done. This that time. was stupid as hell. I can't believe that worked. <laughs> so we've got our water line in. We'll have water temperature gauge. All you gotta do is run this new plastic line for our oil pressure gauge, and we'll have a set of working gauges in the car. Very important when doing your break-in so you can make sure your pressures and temperatures stay within a safe realm. In the meantime, the engine bay is looking a little more full right now. Kevin ran to the O'Reilly's and got the proper size belts. So now our crankshaft powers our water pump and our alternator. Very exciting. It's coming together, man. This is great. We have a key. Uh, when I bought this thing, it didn't have one. <laughs> So uh, Kevin was able to install an ignition switch with a key. The setup before we had was a switch on one side and a button on the other, and you could steal this thing pretty easily. We got one more bolt on this cross member, and I'm gonna pull the three bolts out that remain. We'll drop our cross member out of the way, get that pan up in there, and put it all back together. Ta-da! Can you get your pan in as it sits? Oh, that'd be lovely. I think we be. can. Yes. Yes. Hell yes. All right. Uh, now oh. we just need all the hard work we forgot. What a great couple of days this has been. You know? No, you're supposed to be stressed for the video. Nolan, this has been terrible, and you should be sad about it. I'm tired. <laughs> I, I haven't slept very well for the past couple of days, but like, 
I'm excited. I can be excited. <laughs> Last one. Yeah. That's lunch. All right. All right. Uh, we're all done underneath, so we're going to drop it down, finish some stuff up top. Then, uh, yeah, break in the engine. Is this it? This is, is the it? last time it's on the lift? Well, I mean, hopefully. sure. Hopefully, yeah. <laughs> I'll probably press this button. Jimmy, say something like, let's move this thing. Or move this thing. I'm eating a sandwich right now. After days of work and hours of stress, the time had finally come. We filled the tank with gas, pushed the car outside, and prepared for the most nerve-wracking step of all, the cam break-in. Okay, gentlemen, all of our hard work is finally going to pay off, right? Right. Let's go. For all the marbles, guys, all those late nights we spent, all those wrenches we, we all turned, <laughs> comes down to this. We really couldn't have done without you, James. Yeah, yeah. Man, I am so excited. I feel like my... Um, my nephew is about to be bored. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it's time. It's finally here. We are going to break in this motor. We are about to crank this over because right now our fuel is also dry. We're going to crank it for a bit. And we're going to watch for oil pressure. It's only been sitting for a year and it had full pressure last year. It was hitting the bypass at 50 PSI. Nice, healthy motor. But we are still going to take the precaution of not firing it on fuel immediately until we see pressure and make sure that we spin it over long enough to at least build up that fuel in the carburetor. Yeah. Then, if everything's good, we'll put the fire to it. Crank this, let's watch for fuel and oil pressure. All right. You see anything on your gauge? No. Nothing yet? No fuel flowing here either. Yeah. All right, we'll give her one or two more and then we might have to prime it manually. Okay. Go ahead. I heard it bogged down like the oil pump started moving. Going. Got it? Okay. Huh. It's up to 25 now. 25, that's good enough Solid. to start priming everything up. So yeah, it's, it's probably good enough to start priming everything up. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Get your eye and your pressure, sir. Yep, cranking. We are gonna fire this and try to get some fuel up to her. Go ahead. She's got gas in it! She's got gas. She's got gas. Hold on, guys. Oh, the belt's down a little bit. Feels awesome! Yes! How's your pressure? Good, 50. 50. 55. This is sick. Oh, yeah. It's a lot of smells, man. Do you feel like a big boy? Yes! <laughs> My, you are a big well, boy. Not, not in this current seat. I feel very small in here, James. Is that the only pull? Maybe a little lifter noise. Here's a good example of why ignition timing matters. Listen to the engine. It's revving up and down, but I am not moving the throttle. That's actually how you set your idle. You can see more of that on my channel. It gets really in depth. Kevin, I'm not seeing the temp gauge rise at all. Huh? I'm not seeing the temp gauge rise. It won't until your thermostat opens. Okay. Everybody left. They got bored. <laughs> it's just us and 15 minutes left. 14 minutes. Thermostat's open. 2,000 RPM. I'm going to turn the fan on. Okay. Hey. lifter noise and this valve cover we'll have to deal with. It's not getting worse though, so I'm not too worried. Since we're sitting stationary right now and we're running at high RPM, we're starting to see a little temp get into this. We're seeing about 200. We're gonna get a little water in the radiator, help cool things down. There you go. Let it pull that for a bit. That took 15 degrees off. We're down to 190. We might have to do that one more time. We got eight minutes left. So one thing we didn't mention, that we did in my video. Older vehicles before mid 80s and everything that had catalytic converters all had what's called a flat tapping camshaft. They didn't have a roller on the end of the lifter and they needed zinc in the oil to act as a sacrificial layer. Unfortunately, when catalytic converters came around, zinc was bad for the catalyst, so it was yeah. clogging them up. So they took zinc out of today's oil. So if you have an older car, you need to go buy zinc and add it to your oil every oil change. You can get the little blue STP bottles, two of them, or the one big expensive um, 
Lucas one and use half of it. I think that's what we did. Yeah. Especially on a break-in, make sure you have zinc in your oil, which we do. So alongside the zinc, the reason we're doing a cam break-in right now is because it's a flat tapping camshaft. Roller cams, you don't have to do this. Yeah. They're just good to go, that's why they're great. But we have to do that to embed the metal of the cam into the metal of the lobes so that they make a nice Layer. conjoined married surface. And the reason we need RPM to do it is splash oil up on the lobes. Oh, interesting. Okay. So you soak that cam with oil for 20 minutes while it breaks in, yeah. and then immediately drop your oil and do an oil change, which we will do in four, four minutes, minutes and 45 seconds. How's your pressure? So we're going to see a decrease in pressure as the oil gets hot and thins out. But we're just under 50 right now. We are excellent oil pressure. Minute 30. 221 degrees. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Throws a rod. <laughs> oh, she died. Fire her back up. We need to get her cooled down. Okay. So now we got to dial in our idle, which we haven't touched yet. There she goes. We'll take it in, let it cool, drop her oil. Now, this motor's broke in. Want to hear it, Nolan? Yeah. I, is that dust <laughs> or black smoke? <laughs> I guess that's dust in the muffler. I think that's dust. <laughs> How's your temps and pressures at idle? It'll be lower. Temps at the uh, dotted line uh, and pressures at 25. Idle. Yep. That's pretty normal because that oil's just been beat to hell and really hot right now, and it doesn't have the RPM it had before, so it's going to be lower. Yeah, but yeah. 25 psi at idle for a motor this old, that's like of this vintage. That's that's good. That's healthy. Nolan. Yes, sir. Would you like to rev your car? Yeah. <laughs> Yes, man. Yes! That's sick. Oh, my God. The stressful part is over. We pulled it off. You see what I meant by, like, the most stressful 20 minutes of your life? That felt like an hour. <laughs> that, was, that was a lot, man. Well, Nolan, it's broke in and not broke in. <laughs> nice. Yes. Very, very happy for that. Yeah, well done. Why That's does it smell like that. meat? It smells like something's cooking. There is a barbecue joint near the office. So the only thing it. we're burning right now is time. Let's get this sucker together. Oh, dang. Okay. Two in one clip. Okay. Might be, a, might be a rat carcass in that muffler or something. Oh, we got to start looking into cooking rats because it smells pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> we were going to push it inside, but we thought, you know what? We've come this far. We might as well see if it will move forward on its own. Oh, yeah. You got brakes. You're good. Go for it. Oh my god! Oh my god, it's moving! It moves! It is moving! It's moving! <laughs> yeah. 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 There you go. Thank you. Oh my God. Who would ever thought she'd roll again? Uh, Not you. <laughs> how's, how's it feel, huh? I, I can't even process right now. It's like, it's like incredible. That was awesome. I, uh, I don't know, man. Jerry, you get, I'll take you for a ride, man. Okay, yes, yeah. yes. Take like everybody for a ride. Take us but for a first, ride. we got a lot of stuff we got to do. When was the last time it drove? Do we know? I have no idea, dude. No, thousand years. No idea. First well, drive I'm, in a I'm thousand. I'm assuming 83 because that's what the that's, sticker, the that's sticker a on the chunk. the sticker on the on the plate. First drive in 40 years. Yeah. Maybe. Let's get back to it. Mopar no car, dude. That's what's up. That's what's up. It's been a lot of no cars. What's the issue? Yeah, we got a pretty uh, little healthy leak of uh, 
That's Nolan. Lake Nolan under there, dude. Yeah. There, that That's is, not a lake. It's more of a... That sucker's that big around. It's, it's been there for like, what, three minutes? <laughs> I don't know, man. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, I'm going to change the oil right now. Kevin's going to keep working on his uh, wiring diagram for the headlights and brake lights. And we'll worry about that stuff tomorrow. Or yeah, yeah, next year. Next year. It's an annual video. Yeah, yeah. Where are you so, at, sir? Right, the, right here. This crack? Mm, yeah. Yep. You want some? No. <laughs> Look at me like I'm crazy. <laughs> okay, 52 Imperial guy. Whew, just spray some more of that under here. <laughs> Whoa, whole new world. <laughs> All right, the oil's coming out. Looks pretty clear, looks pretty good. There's a touch of cloud to it, but I mean, we did just do a break in. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Oil's gonna look good, but the problem is we're gonna have like very, very fine fragments of metal and stuff in there from wearing that cam That's in. what I was thinking. And we don't want to run that through our motor because mm -hmm. um, it's smaller than the micron rating of our filter, oh. especially probably on this one. Oh yeah, so I got. that's right, I gotta put a new filter in here. Yep. So we do know this engine has new pistons. Yes. That we could clearly see. We didn't know if I had a new cam. We played it safe on that. So hopefully on those pistons, they have new rings. Mm -hmm. As those wear into the cross hatch yeah. on the cylinder wall, they're going to break off more microscopic fragments of metal that will pass through your filter because okay. it's smaller than the micron rating. So you're going to be doing a lot of oil changes okay. in the first thousand miles. Okay. Like one immediately after the break-in, sure. one in about 50, 80 miles. Okay. Another one, I believe, around like the 200 mile mark. Okay. And then one more of that 500, another 1,000, and then your regular oil changes. Okay, cool. So it's expensive. Yeah. You're gonna be buying a lot of oil. That part sucks, but it's cheaper than a new motor. Yeah, definitely. Daddy's standing there preaching to the choir, you see. God lover. Where's my zinc? I gotta find my zinc. The push rod technology was pretty rudimentary back then. Uh, they didn't have like roller cams like today. Uh, so gotta use this as well. Uh, pretty cool, pretty good stuff. All right, the oil filter is draining right now, uh, which is kind of new. Um, usually just pull the whole thing off, but uh, I'm gonna let that drain out, then put a new filter in from the top and then put new oil in it and we'll be good to go. New bulbs, rated for 12 volts going in. I got a new bulb down here. Got to clean up a little wiring on the back side, but this should be good to go pretty soon. I don't have any of the switches hooked up inside. We could probably short the wires out to a booster pack to see if the bulbs work. All right, Kevin, let's see these headlights. Low beam. Headlights on. High beam. Uh, yeah. This will be maybe driving light. Is it brighter or dimmer right now? That's definitely brighter. Okay, sweet, everything works. I can verify my board over there and keep moving forward. That's First great. time lights have been on in like, what do we say, a thousand years? Or yeah, I think so. 40, I don't remember. 40,000 years. 40,000. Yeah. Before Edison was born. I, <laughs> this car actually invented electricity. We've been talking all week that we need to change all the bulbs in the car because if we hit a six volt with 12 volt, it will blow the bulb. Ready? Yeah. There it went, uh, just like that. It, we heard a little tick, and then that's it. All the lights would have came on once. Well, Actually, not, this but, car, it would have just caught on fire, <laughs> and that would have been a pretty good light. I but, mean, it's just that little filament, right, that, yep. that just gave out? Hits with twice the voltage and just burns out. Yeah, it's blowed up. This morning, we finished up wiring up the headlights. We have running lights. We have low beams and high beams, which is very exciting. Now, uh, Kevin is figuring out turn signal situation and I'm gonna get started on the brake lights. Once that's done, put some more tractor juice in the transmission and take this thing out for its first real test drive. So, very excited. Also very tired, dude, I'm dying. I had to do a podcast this morning. I, I yeah. For the next couple hours, Nolan and I mustered up the last bit of brain strength we had, did some scheming on the whiteboard, assembled a wiring harness, ran it through the car, and finally got the tail lights hooked up. The last step that remains back here, is to plug these guys together like so. There we go. You'll notice there's a few extra wires. We actually threw two or three extra in the loom so that in the future, if he wants to hook up any accessories back here, like I think this car has a trunk light and I know there's a fuel level sender and stuff like that back here. He doesn't have to run extra stuff exterior of the loom we ran and that'll make life easier up there. I'd show you what's under the dash, but it's all tucked up and put away now and you can't see anything except for the fact that the light switch is reinstalled. 
Beyond that, if I go up there and hit the brakes right now, hopefully these will light up. Let's find out. Assuming the pressure switch works, it should turn on right now. Ready? Yeah. Whoa. Yes. Running lights. Cool. And then both. Nice. Sick. God, that looks awesome. Look at those things. All right, Kevin, let's see those headlights. Runners. Runners are on. Headlights. Brights. Dude. Back down, that's sick. There that's it is. Great. Cool. That's electrical. That's enough to drive around. I'm gonna start cleaning out the interior so we can put the seat back That'd in. That'd be great. And then when we put it down, we'll torque the tires and- uh, Put a hood on. Put a hood on. Go for a drive. Yes, let's do it. We got like half an hour until the sun goes down. What? Yeah, daylight savings, dude. For you farmers out there. With that, we cleaned up the interior, threw the front seat back in, and piled in for a ride. Get out of here. It's the moment of truth, Nolan. Here we go, dude. <laughs> we're on the street, dude. This thing hasn't left in years. I know. Dude. Dude. We're driving it. Imperial. We're doing Imperial. it. <laughs> when you showed up with this thing on a trailer at my house three years ago, I didn't think it would take you three years to get it running. <laughs> a year uh, later, did you think he'd ever get it running? A year later, I told him that he wasn't allowed to keep it at my house anymore. <laughs> <laughs> this person. thing was made before rear seat belts. Yeah. <laughs> this is the reason that Ralph Nader wrote the book. <laughs> Kevin, thank you so much for uh, helping me with this. Uh, Absolutely. Here. Honestly, I'm honored to be here and be a part of this moment right now. So that makes it all worth it. Nolan, will we see more of the Imperial on the Donut Media channel? Oh, maybe. I don't know about on the channel, but definitely, uh, definitely on my Instagram. Hey, Nolan, you're leaking something. Yeah, it, Jesse says you're. Oh, it'd be like that. It's that's the trans. That's the next episode next year. Kevin says it'd be like that. <laughs> hey, Woo! Let's go, dude. Yeah, Hell baby. yeah. Tired, man. <laughs> oh man. All right. Thank you so much for joining us on this journey. This could not have happened without Kevin's help. So please go subscribe to Kevin's channel, Junkyard Digs. Uh, go show him some love in the comments. Uh, subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. We put out a lot of videos every week. No one. Thank you very much for having me out. You're welcome, Kevin. And letting me be a part of this. That was, once again, absolutely worth all the stuff that we go through every week doing this stuff, to see the reactions of the people whose lives we can make a difference and teaching hey. them things in person yeah. makes it all worth it. Yeah, thank you. Now I gotta figure out how to do wiring now. There's a whiteboard over there. You'll figure it out. Okay. And with that, the donut guys pushed me out of their driveway one last time. By the way, if you don't recognize this car, I suggest checking this video out on my channel. This was a car I bought sight unseen, local to Donut Media that week, and then drove it 1,800 miles home to Iowa with no reverse, no oil pressure, and no heat. By the way, it is 16 degrees out this morning. Just like Nolan's Imperial, it too was a crazy automotive adventure. Before we go, of course, I owe a huge, huge thank you to Donut Media for helping make this possible. When I say that, I don't only mean for inviting me out to help on Nolan's car, but for all those at Donut Media who approved sharing the footage and helped me put this video together. So a huge thank you goes out to the editors, the hosts, all the guys behind the desks, everyone at Donut Media who was so helpful in making this possible for my channel. I cannot thank you guys enough, and I cannot wait to come out and do it again. So from all of us here at Junkyard Digs, I hope you enjoyed and we'll see you next week for another episode. I think we're going racing. <laughs>